Recently, I was led to a video by just pearly things. And the video was called what you can expect now. And this is right after she has been demonetized from YouTube and had a YouTube channel deleted. Now, if you guys didn't know this, she had a clips channel that was removed. And the reasons why clip channels are so easy to remove is because they're clips. So the automated bot can go in there and detect hate speech and things like that. And also she's already been demonetized. So they're already looking out for her to pretty much shut her down. And I want to go ahead and read this here. YouTube just deleted an entire clips channel of ours with zero warnings for conspiracy theories. YouTube still has not responded as to what specifically I said that was hate speech that resulted in my channel being demonetized. Please sign up for our Google form because I do not know how much longer we'll be on here. It is really disheartening to see how those who speak truth are silenced at all costs. Now again, here we have what I consider a lot of unaccountability. It is crystal clear that Pearl has been all on Twitter talking about you know, 16 year old ladies are hotter than 26 year old ladies. She was interviewing some lady's child on the street, 15 years old, asking them sexual questions, refusing to take down the content. But now she's acting like it is YouTube's fault. They're trying to like silence the truth, right? <clears throat> but listen to this, in this video, we're gonna hear some more excuses as to why she's trying to change her platform around. Let's play that clip. I'm just tired. I feel like I've learned what I needed to learn from interviewing these chicks. Um, and I don't know, something like changed over time. When I was smaller, there was a little bit more of like a genuineness in conversation people used to have. And that was kind of why I loved it, um, to be honest. Like, I really, I loved having these, like, open, honest conversations where we could go into, like, topics um, that were kind of taboo. I really liked that. Um, but the bigger I got, the more people just kind of want to come on for clout, get their 10 seconds of fame. Um they come in like, I don't know, something along the way. And it's weird because you get into media and you start to realize that everyone just like has an agenda. Like it's not really about finding like what what's true. You know? So firstly, she's saying, you know, she's really tired of talking to chicks who just don't get it, which is interesting because she's one of those ladies who just doesn't get it, right? I mean, leave it here nor there. So she's saying like, oh, I'm tired of talking to these ladies. These ladies are silly. They don't really get it. Which is interesting because that is exactly what you got into the industry to do. You pretty much tried to copy Fresh and Fit. You took it to London just to be like them. That was the whole situation, right? You, 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 you took out that whole scheme to be like them after hating on them so that you can get money, all right? But the problem was you didn't know how to filter it down. <clears throat> you wanted to continue to do more and more and more, you know, go on Twitter, offend more, like what? Bring people who are already banned off of on YouTube, giving platforms to people like Andrew Tate, people like Sneeko. You have this guy, Nick Fuentes. So and pretty much offend everybody. Like you offended the Jews, you offended the blacks. So doing all of these things to go viral costs you your monetization. Saying silly things about women and people in general costs you your clips channel, all right? But here's the best kicker about that whole clip. She then goes and says, you know what? When she was smaller, it was all good. But, um, you know, people have more general conversations. But these people now are just trying to cloud chase her. Are you serious? How many people did you email, including myself? I've been preach trying to grow your platform, trying to clout chase yourself. You're completely trying to go on all these platforms. Piers Morgan, you're the biggest clout chaser in the game. And, and I mean, none of the stuff that you get is really built on your own talent. It's always a collaboration. Andrew Tate, Brittany Renner, Destiny. It's not like people queue in to listen to like just pearly things because she has something to say. No, that's what it is. And so now what you're trying to do 
is go back to Pearl Daly and stuff like that because you're trying to make a grift toward the conservative right. Everything is always a grift. And this is what happens when you, fee you see content creators just bag chasing. Whenever you see content creators bag chasing, <clears throat> they're always just trying to chase a trend. Like for somebody like me, I've been in the black sector for 10 years, damn near. I've pretty much been talking about the same thing around the same niche for the same 10 years. Of course, it might have expanded with a little bit of celebrity and things like that, but relatively, I've always been about black male, you know, black male empowerment kind of content, black community empowerment kind of content, or, you know, being a tough critic on situations, being in the pro black sector of black YouTube. I've always stayed in that niche. I've never really tried to go somewhere else. You know, I talked about conservative politics a little bit, but usually I'm in the same niche. You can depend on Osha to deliver that. But when you're chasing the bag, you'll start off doing shows with the blacks, which is what she was doing at first. Sarah Garvey, King Richards, you're dating black guys. You were at first a reaction channel. You were the, you know, you were the, uh, the, the, the white girl reacting to hip hop content. You're just trying to get on. Then we went from there to the fresh and fit copycats. Then we went there to trying to be political out to the right. Let's bring on the Andrew Tates and let's bring on the Nick Fuentes. Now you're trying to be Candace Owens, minus the talent. So everything you're trying to do is to make money, but you're never being true to yourself. And so because you don't have a niche, you have to do all kinds of extra stuff to get attention. Anything to go viral, saying anything to get people talking about you because you're not in a one lane niche where you can build a dependable fan base. Like somebody like, let's say like Corey Holcomb, Tariq, Jason Black. Look, those people are, they're large channels in the black sector, but they get a lot more people going live when you go live because they have built a steady audience. But when you don't build the audience and you're trying to chase a steady bag, and then when you get no views because all your views come from shorts, all your views come from collaborations, and when that person leaves the channel, and when you have your little podcast with nobody else, hey, it's your channel's kind of dying. So you're left to going out and pretty much trying to say anything to get some attention which will result in a strike. Now, let me kind of talk about this. At the end of the video, she starts talking about how she's gonna have to make up a paywall. You know, she's gonna have to start charging for some of this stuff to get some support. And that's probably what you're gonna see at the beginning of the end. She's not like Fresh and Fit. Fresh and Fit have the ability to take their platform over to Rumble, all right, and still make money. But the, the main thing is, is that she did it to herself. She doesn't wanna be accountable. You know, you can say things on the platform and be a political channel, be on the right. My good brother, Anthony Brian Logan, is a, he's been a long time a uh, right winger on the political right for a while. And I don't think he's never even had a community guideline strike. Great YouTuber, awesome YouTuber, is a good friend of mine, okay? But he don't never had the problems that Pearl have. Wanna know why? Because Pearl would do anything for clout, anything for views. So now that you're being punished along with the others that were doing the same thing, it wasn't just you, all y'all. Sneeko, Andrew Tate, Fresh and Fit, you, Zerka, all y'all got the same thing because y'all were doing whatever the hell you want to do. Now you're talking about it's, it's disappointing. What, what are you talking about? Again, and then these are the same people trying to hold women accountable. And I noticed some of the people in the red pill are some of the most unaccountable people I've ever seen, ever, especially in the white manosphere community. I'm like, yo, 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 like, do y'all know what y'all talking about? But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Appreciate you for all you do. Subscribe to the bell. We're out.